Recently, I did a video on Reed from Portland, Oregon, who is feeding his San Pedro's with hydroponic fertilizers and gets them to grow from seeds to plants that are two feet tall in just over a year, which is very impressive. But there is another way to supercharge the growth of your San Pedro's, and that is with grafting. Personally, I find grafting to be very easy, at least on Trichocereus, which is the only stock I've been using so far. The technique I used, which I've copied from others, is very simple and shown in my video how to graft a San Pedro. Right now on the screen, you can see the graft from that video as it is now. It is Pacanoid Titan, which is a totally spineless Pacanoid with an unusually high number of ribs. Absolutely gorgeous clone. So far, I've only grafted small pups that have come out of adult plants and I'm very happy with the results. The grafts have worked and I've been growing at a good rate. Next, I think I will try to graft seedlings and that will be another adventure that I will share with you. But as you can tell from the title of this video, the grafting stock doesn't have to be trichocereus. You can also use Periscopsis, which is also a cactus, although it doesn't look like one. It is a very common stock for grafting cacti and will allow you to turn your baby peyotes or baby San Pedros into adult plants in a very short amount of time. You can purchase Periscopsis online for as low as a dollar or a euro each, if you purchase several at a time, which is quite an economical base for grafts. Much cheaper than San Pedro's for sure. You can also find it at some plant nurseries or purchase it from someone doing grafts. Personally, I've only got one Periscopsis plant, which is doing quite poorly because I've not been watering it enough. If I had more of those, I would take better care of them and I'm sure they would thrive. But with just one plant, it only gets watered at the same time as my other adult cacti, which is clearly not enough. In this video, I will show you photos of the glorious grafts on Periscopsis that one of my subscribers has emailed me. His name is Julien and he lives somewhere in the northern half of Europe. Julien grows Trichocereus from seeds. Some of his seedlings are left to grow the slow natural way, while others are grafted. Those are grafted once they have reached the same diameter as the Periscopsis. He then leaves them attached to the stock for six months before degrafting them. As you can see, that is an impressive amount of growth for just six months. Maybe you are wondering why is there a need for degrafting? After all, with a graft on San Pedro, like I've shown you before, you don't need to degraft because the base is wide and sturdy enough to support any kind of weight. But on a periscopsis, the stem is much thinner and therefore, when the sound starts to weigh too much for the stem, you'll need to degraft. After a degraft to science, Julien leaves the cut to heal for two weeks. He then plants them in pots, which he places in his greenhouse in full sun and bottom waters every two weeks, starting on the first day. When I say full sun, bear in mind this is the northern half of Europe. If you live somewhere warmer, like I do, then full sun all day will most likely be too much and the cacti will get burnt. This method has worked beautifully for Julien as the sounds have resumed growth without the slightest etiolation. It means that a good root system came into place quickly, an adequate amount of light, water and temperature were provided. It's now been exactly one year since the seeds germinated. As you can see, the growth is comparable to what Reed achieved with his advanced feeding methods. Obviously, out of the two options, grafting is the one that requires the most work, as you need to graft and then degraft and then repot. But it does present the advantage that no chemical fertilizers were used and therefore no potentially harmful substances could end up being stored in the plant tissues. Here are five examples of Pacanoi times Pacanoi, therefore pure San Pedro, that Julien has grafted. They are grown from my own seeds, so that should be of interest to those of you who have bought the same varieties and might be curious as to what they will look like once they are a bit older. First, we have Sardaniola A3 times Colosso. I would imagine that this cross will produce a lot of flowers when it is adult, since both parents flower a lot, especially Colosso, which flowers extremely heavily. Second, we have Sardaniola A3 times Reals. This one should have very short spines when adult. It should also grow fast, since both parents are fast growing. Next, we have Reals times Sardaniola A1. This cross should be closer to Reals, since here, Reals is the mum. There is a video on Reals coming up soon. Here we have TPM SPM times Francis. 
Normally, TPM SPM likes to stick to a green color. It's not a pachanoid that gets bluish, not even if you place it in the shade. But here, it's matched with the very bluish Francis. So it's not surprising that this cross has bluish tones. Like always with crosses involving TPM SPM, a percentage of plants should start turning monstrous after about two years. It doesn't seem to be the case with this one example, well at least so far. Lastly, we have Sardaniola A2 times Costa. It does look a bit Bridgetty like, even though there is no Bridgetty genetics here. But that happens often with crosses involving Pacanoid Costa. If you're interested in growing the same exact varieties that you see on the screen, some of them are still available from me. Julien learned these grafting techniques from a YouTube video called Grafting on Periscopsis. If you want to check it out, the link is in the description of this video. It took Julien several tries before he got the technique right, and he found that some important points are missing from that video. I asked him if he could share those with us. So here they are in the form of 9 tips. Tip number 1 is to cut the periscopsis at a part that is still green, and that is not too fibrous, with a diameter of 4 to 5 mm, which is about one fifth of an inch. Tip number two is to wait until the seedlings have the same diameter as the periscopsis. In the case of Julien, that takes two to three months after the seeds are sowed. Tip number three is the most important one according to Julien. The graft should be performed four days after you've watered the periscopsis for the last time. If you graft sooner, the pressure from the plant sap will prevent the scion from sticking to the stock. And if you wait longer, the graft won't work either, because the pressure won't be sufficient. Now if you want my opinion, this particular tip is likely specific to periscopsis, because I've never paid any attention to the frequency of watering when grafting on a trichocerus, and my graft always seems to work. Tip number four. Julien dips the blade in alcohol before each cut. And then he dries the blade thoroughly with toilet paper. He says that if you don't dry the blade, the alcohol residues will make the flesh go brown and the graft will fail. Tip number five. Once the scions are grafted, Julien leaves them in the shade for five days before he moves the film and reintroduces them progressively to the light. He recommends a light watering at the same time. Tip number six. All the periscopsis are not equal, and they have different levels of tolerance to humidity. Therefore, some trial and error may be necessary, depending on the source of your periscopsis. Tip number seven. Julien bottom waters them once a week, by letting them sit in a large tray filled with water for a few hours. Afterwards, he pumps the remaining water out of the tray. Personally, when I need to drain water from a large tray, I drill a small hole in it and fill that hole with a foam ear plug. You squeeze that plug between your fingers as if you were to insert it in your ear. But instead, you place it in a hole and when it expands, it totally blocks the water. To drain the tray, you just remove the ear plug. Still on the subject of watering, Julien told me that if the soil dries out completely, the periscopsis will die. But if you keep the soil constantly soaked, the plant will rot. You just gotta find the right middle. Tip number eight. Julien uses regular commercial soil and when the grafts are big enough, he pours a bit of fertilizer designed for green leafy plants. He warned me that the Trichocerus perivianus and the Scopulucolas did not tolerate the fertilizer, so he doesn't use it anymore for those. Tip number nine. When the scion starts growing again, after being grafted, Julien places it just five centimeters away from its fluorescent T5s. Otherwise, there will be etiolation, according to him. Five centimeters is two inches, and yes, that is a very short distance. Julien adds that you need to make sure all the periscopsis are cut at the same height. Otherwise, they won't all stand at the same distance below the tube. In order to have an endless supply of periscopsis, Julien makes cuttings of it and puts them in regular potting soil, which leaves wet for the first few days. They make root and start growing again. Like this, he constantly has new periscopsis plants for future grafts. Naturally, Julien does not graft all of the plants that he grows from seeds. 
The ones he doesn't graft are reported individually at four months of age. He finds that they grow faster when they get reported at that age. As you can see, he uses plastic pots that are all joined together as one single mold, which means they won't fall over, even though they are quite deep. Maybe I should get some of those, since my cacti tend to make the pots fall over when they grow bigger. These were first repotted at four months of age, and they are now ripe for another repotting. This time, they will be growing in regular square pots. They are all grown from my own seeds. From left to right, we have Pacanoi Mira open pollinated. Mira is a beautiful bluish Pacanoi that grows fast. Next, we have Cerdaniola A1 times Terskeki Ivy. All the crosses with Terskeki Ivy are extremely popular as they give a lot of monstros and variegated plants. Third, we have Trucocerus Pacianus. This you won't find in my seed list because it's not a sacred cactus and I only sell sacred seeds. However, Spacianus makes a really good stock for grafts. Julien told me he was looking for Spacianus seeds in order to do grafts, and I just happened to have some that I collected myself on some Spacianus plants that I know of. Next is Atacamensis tam Spacanoi. It's been a few years since I've last had Atacamensis flowers. It doesn't flower often, unfortunately. Then we have Taquimbalensis open pollinated, always fat and fast growing, with extreme spines when adult. And finally, Knutianus open pollinated. Now sold that, these were very popular seeds because quite a few of them grew up to be beautiful variegated plants, and this one is no exception. You can see some variegation starting near the bottom and some milder variegation around the top. Now you can see a few older plants, Pacanoi times Pacanoi, also grown without grafting. These are two year old, and as you can see, the proportions are superb. Julien says that these plants were reported way too late, and they could have been much bigger. On the left, we have Cerdaniola A3 times Cerdaniola A1, which is a superb choice if you want a nearly spineless San Pedro. Keep in mind that Trichocerus plants always have spines when they are very young, but here the spines will retract or disappear when adult. In the center, this is Cerdaniola A3 times Titan. Titan is a spineless pacanoi that you saw at the beginning of this video. When this cross is adult, it should be totally spineless. And on the right, Mira open pollinated. I have two different kinds of Mira seeds available. One of them where the dad is likely to be Sardaniola A3, which is the one you see here. And the other one where the dad is likely to be Colosso. Here, I did apply pollen from Sardaniola A3, but I could not enclose the flowers in pollination bags, as Mira is not one of my plants. This is why I call it open pollinated, even though the dad is likely to be Sardaniola A3. Julien loves this plant, as it grows very fast and has small spines. It has also been my experience that Mira grows very fast. I think it is an awesome clone, and I totally recommend you to grow both crosses, even though they are open pollinated. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to buy some of the hand pollinated seeds that I produce myself, please send me an email mentioning in which country you live, and I will reply with a list of seeds, with prices and photos of the parents. You will find my email address in the description of this video. I will also make it appear on the screen now. My specialty is really the seeds, but if you want to buy some live plants, I also have some seedlings available, grown from the same seeds. They are about a year old. All for now, I will see you soon with more videos. Make sure you subscribe to my channel if you have not done that already. Cheers.